Hello everyone, this is a, a quick overview of one of the new features I've been working on for Dungeon Architect. So Dungeon Architect is a procedural level generation tool and this window here is the new feature. It allows you to create some really powerful layouts for your dungeons. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. so we have three panels. Uh, we have the execution graph where we, we, we would be defining uh, the designing the generation of the layout. Uh, you just drop in the various nodes and then configure them like these uh, and then on the on the side we have the layout graph and the tile map so initially the level is designed in a higher level graph so that it's easier to control the flow and uh, so it's first designed here and then when we are happy with it we transfer this over into a tile map where each node eventually becomes a room and the links between them they become uh, uh, they become the doors or the locks or the one way uh, one way doors so this tool is interactive uh, you can for example if I if I select this enemy it would take me to the appropriate item in the tile so if I go to the bonus chest here Uh, there is the I've also added a, a bunch of 3d content to go along with the sample so uh, whenever you run this so you can see the, the algorithm is pretty fast uh, it would create your layout based on the rules that you specified here and you can uh, you can go back and click on each node to see how it was how it was generated uh, so you start with a empty you start with an empty layout graph and so here you can specify the resolution I have chosen 6 by 5 uh, and then you say then you create a main path here I have said I want a path of size 10 and I, I gave a name to that path as main uh, which I will be referencing later on uh, then I'd like to create another small branch coming out of the main path so that I can place my key over there this key would eventually be used to place a lock somewhere further down the line. So in the configuration start from path I've given the branch name as main. So it's going to start from a path that has been tagged as main and we've tagged it here. Uh, right so we give the min max size of the path as well so size is just one and we've named this path as main underscore key. So we want another path uh to be the alternate path and here we say the start of the path should be from the main branch and if we specify the end path then it would make sure that it connects back to the path so if you leave it open like this uh, if you leave it empty it would just it would not try to connect it back but uh if it's uh if you do specify it will kind of connect to the specified branch uh we want one more path uh like so and then we have a bonus branch where we will be placing our treasure chest so again start and then in the main path uh, and then we want another path for the bonus coming out from the alternate branch and here I've uh, kept the end as empty so it doesn't connect back to it Alright, so when, when, once we have created the paths, we are going to go ahead and create the key lock systems. Uh, so, uh, I have specified the key branch to be main key, which we've created back here. This one. And I want the... Sorry, I want the, uh, the end... I'm sorry. Uh, I want the lock to be placed on the main branch. So you have control on where you want to place the key and the lock and it will make sure that the level is playable as in it will not place the keys behind the lock. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and create a bunch of uh, other key locks for the alternate path bonus room, one more key lock for the for exiting the alternate path, another uh, key lock for the main branch. Uh, for the main branch uh, treasure room. Uh, next up we have a node called spawn items uh, so this allows you to spawn different items on the 
uh, on the various nodes. Uh, so I have uh, so here you have different enemy types. You can also go ahead and choose a custom type, which we'll get to later on. So for now, I'm spawning in an enemy, and uh, here I specify on which branches do I spawn this on. So I'm saying I want to spawn it on the main branch and the alternate branch. So uh, I want to spawn it on the green branch and the alternate orange branch. And uh, you also control how many, uh, how many, uh, the number of uh, items you like to spawn. So in this case, I'm giving zero five. And uh, another spawn method is you could have a random number between zero five, or you can have a linear difficulty. So as you move forward towards your goal, the difficulty would increase. Starting uh, when you start from the original branch the difficulty won't be uh, I mean start with 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So based on the difficulty you can see that the number of enemies are increasing. Uh, so we go ahead and spawn a few more on the blue path. We spawn a we, now we spawn treasure here on the uh, on the treasure branches that we have specified on the top bonus underscore main bonus underscore alt and then we place in a bunch of enemies in our uh, treasure rooms uh, and then another enemy here and we spawn a bunch of uh, uh, health pickup so this is a custom item that I have uh, that I have so item type is set to custom and when that happens you can specify your uh, your items here uh, and then another weapon rack. Uh, now, now after this, when we finalize it, you see that the locks have moved away from the. So you, we see that the locks have moved away from the node onto the links. So it makes sense to put this in the uh, in the end. So before we start, I just want to uh, mention that the uh this work has been inspired by uh Joyce Dorman's uh talk on cyclic dungeons so uh, it's a really nice talk if you are interested I'll put a link in the description below so uh now when we go to the finalized graph we are basically moving the uh we're moving the locks from the uh, from the rooms onto the links uh and it makes sense to put it in the end uh because we might want to put the lock before or after uh, the uh, uh, I mean in the link incoming link or the outgoing link depending on the context so uh, we do this there is also a uh, there's also a feature where we make some of the doors as one-way doors the orange links that you see there are one-way doors so uh, the player cannot go from here right he can only go towards the uh, specified direction so this helps in uh, this makes sure that the player doesn't walk around the uh, doesn't walk around the uh, uh, around the lock doors uh, then finally we, uh, we when we are done with the graph we go ahead and create the tile map now here in the tile map I specify how big uh, should the room be right so each node I want it to be uh, I've specified it to be eight tiles per node so if you want a bigger dungeon or a bigger, uh, if you want more space within a room, just go ahead and bump this number up. Uh, you also move it around a bit, shift it around. So let me show it to you right now. I'll change this to 12 and uncheck the randomization. It's the same graph, but it's a bit bigger. All right. so we've done this now there is uh, there's another feature where we can overlay a bunch of stuff on top of it and finally merge them together so I want to overlay a, a few trees like you see over here so I have tree overlays I have foliage I have rocks uh, you can have all that and uh, this would not uh, get in the way of the main path the level would still be playable uh, but you can create something like this. So uh, these are noise maps, Berlin noise. Uh, you get control on how you want to generate them. 
and uh, then finally go ahead and merge them together so there's one more called create tile map elevation so this is another noise that you can use to uh, create a like a like a background here so you see there's a smooth uh, this basically Berlin noise gradient noise so you see there is a smooth uh, change in height so it gives a nice look uh, then you have overlays so these are trees and these overlays can also be placed on top of the the background elevation so the merge node is smart enough to merge all of this properly together and individually you have uh, something called merge configuration so if you want to have certain you want it to be merged in a certain way you can update it here so each one has its own merge configuration and finally for the grass foliage I have made it a bit more aggressive so that we can have more grass uh, and then finally we merge it and uh, there's a node called optimize so when we when we are building the level we don't want rocks all over here in this area where the player would never see it right so uh, here I go ahead and optimize it getting rid of the tiles that are further away from the layout so you control the distance you control the distance on how far away you want the uh, on how far away you want to retain the tiles and drop the ones that are too far away. Uh, and then finally, we finalize the uh, the tile map. And in this phase, we place in all the uh, place in all the objects that were part of this room. So yeah, this creates the a fully playable level I'm working on a uh, I'm working on a sample game and uh, it should be available in the next update soon maybe in a week or so so thank you for watching